Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. These sets weren't found per se at SmashCon. Zinkus recorded these on his phone. So they are salvaged, but I mean, it's not YouTube regular quality. It's not what you'd have if you were, you know, if, if it was on stream. It's recorded the old fashioned way on a phone. So obviously the quality is not perfect, but it's good enough to where you can see what's happening. So the conclusion I came to was that I needed to be a campy little bit. I needed to run away. Do my best Sonic the Hedgehog impression and just keep this character out. Treat Jigglypuff like flying Kazuya. And that's what I did. I literally am thinking this character is a floating version of Kazuya because that's what Jigglypuff basically is to Falcon. Like Jigglypuff touches Falcon and we explode at almost any percent. It's honestly pretty cool that despite not being streamed, this tournament set was able to be recorded on a phone and uploaded to my computer. But if my computer got broken into, this moment in Smash history could have been lost forever if my files got deleted. Both Surfshark VPN on my side, I can rest easy with my data secured. Surfshark VPN is a VPN service that protects your computer and all of your devices with a simple installation of the app on any device you want it for. It's surprisingly inexpensive for everything it offers and does a great job keeping you safe in a world with cyber attacks of all kinds on the rise. In addition to staying safe, you can use it to change your IP address to be in any country you want to. I know recently after a few friends bugged me about it, I wanted to watch some of Studio Ghibli's movies. Yes, I know I'm very late to the party, sue me, but there's a problem. Netflix took them off the American market a while ago. Oh no, but if I use Surfshark VPN to change my IP address and my computer or phone thinks I'm in the UK, problem solved. And now I can watch anything I want, not only in the UK, but any other country in the world too. Heck, I could even use it for Smash, so I could troll people across the world in Elite Smash. All play is local play after all, if you don't mind a little extra lag. Nobody is safe for it anymore for my chaotic playstyle. <laughs> Surfshark VPN sounds pretty great, doesn't it? But it gets better. Because if you use my promo code FALCON, make sure it's all capitalized, then you can not only get a gargantuan 83% discount, but you even get an entire three months of Surfshark VPN completely free of charge. And if my promo code wasn't enough to make your life super easy, I even have this link seen on screen in the description of this video below as well if you want to get started today. Remember, promo code FALCON. And you too control international players on Elite Smash securely. And thank you once again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. So, I've adopted a really different mindset on playing this matchup. The last time we played, it wasn't in bracket, it was at Genesis. There was some kind of exhibition match with a little bit of money on the line. I think it was like, I don't remember how much money it was. It wasn't really a money match because neither of us put the money on the line. A third party who was streaming it basically put money on the line. So it was basically just an exhibition and he kind of waxed my cheeks, not gonna lie. I feel like I was playing it not well and he was playing really well and I got destroyed. So going into this set, I had a, to completely rethink the way that I thought about it all and Jigglypuff can't just do that. But notice how I'm like, just staying a lot more around center stage. I think what you want to do is just be a lot more close to center and just focus on just playing super safe. Like, notice how much I'm doing like all these little pokes with F-tilts and a bunch of stuff like that. Yep, good parry, good catch. Like right there, I think if he didn't slightly mess up that, he would have gotten jab into an aerial, into a position where he could realistically cover all of my options and I just die. Like there are so many positions where if Puff gets the right hit, even at zero, you're forced off stage after taking a lot of percent and they can realistically cover all of your options and you just die. Like Puffkin probably has one of the easier times zero deathing Falcon compared to any other character in the game. No, the only uh, off-stream recorded sets were Base Mage and Cosmos. Yeah, I think you would probably be more incentivized to camp in Viable if you'd played against Base Mage because once you play against a puff that's good enough to where you will just die off of one hit, you're like, oh. The matchup feels very differently when you have to worry about dying literally every single time you get hit no matter your percent. Yeah, like... Like right there he messed up, but I was able to get it back. 
Yep. Like, right there, that little anti-air with the up air, like, that's something that you can do, but... Like, right there, if I didn't perfectly read his drift and fastball timing, I'd just die. I did, so it worked out, but... Oh, yeah, that is OJ in the back. If I remember correctly, uh... I think, uh, Raflo, the French Palatina, and Elegant were playing a set at the time. So, you know, OJ and all the other, and all the other French players were over on that side of the setup. And they were just, you know, making noise for their boy. I think, uh, Raflo won game five, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I think, uh, Falcon Jigglypuff is a very even matchup, personally. Yep. He snapped my jump. That was a good catch. There were probably like 20-ish people watching this set, Flo. Like, you hear all that background noise? A lot of that is just people who are directly behind the camera. Yep. Yeah, he, uh... Let's go, Griffin. That's what Zinka sounds like if any of you were wondering. You can hear, like, people just talking in the background, or cheering for me, or cheering for Base Mage. Because, uh, Zinkus was the one who recorded this and the Cosmos set. He just recorded this on his phone. I think I was playing pretty good. But I think one of the reasons I was playing pretty good was because I'm changing a lot of how I'm playing for the better. I feel like I'm just improving, generally. And yeah, my headphones do a pretty good job of shutting out a lot of background noise. Which helps me, you know, focus on the game. Go, Griffin! Wait, let's, let's go back on this stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's go, Griffin! No one does it like Griffin Miller. Let's go, Key. Yeah, you, you can just... You can just hear the crowd just talking in the background. I did 3 on Myron, yeah. That was the first time we've played in bracket since uh, Infinity Con, so I'm pretty happy about that. He kind of waxed my cheeks at that tournament, and I returned the favor at this one. I also think Falcon vs. Olimar is even, by the way. That little moment. If you look at this position, I read the pound, so what I tried to do was I tried to do a Nair 1, IDJ rising up air into another one, and while I think Jigglypuff is way too light for me to be able to get the second up air into knee, I could have probably gone the uh, the next up air. I probably could have gotten a third one into maybe a fourth one, so you know, I was trying to get a good amount of extra damage. It didn't quite work out though. Either base mage has DI'd it really on point, or I was just slightly off. Yep. Just spacing with back airs and up smashes. Playing super patient, not forcing anything. Oh. See, like right there, if. Ba like, if Base Mage executed just a little bit better, and he read my timing just a little bit better, I would have died. Like, it's so easy to get killed off of straight hits by Puff. Yep, almost died again. Let's go, Griffin! What I listen to when I play, I, I'm just... Just the game audio. Like, I wasn't li like listening to music or anything. I do a lot of reactions off of audio cues, so it's really important that I listen to the game. Like, I react to noises a lot. Good example. Did you know that you can literally react to Bouncing Fish and dodge it when you're off stage? Like, if they just go for raw Bouncing Fish and you're specifically listening for it, the little whistle sound starts frame one when Bouncing Fish is inputted, and you can actually, on reaction, air dodge it if you're specifically listening out for it. Like, if you're not specifically expecting it, that'll slow down your reactions just enough to where you won't be able to react. But, like, there are so many little things that you can react to if you're just listening. 
So I always listen to the game because of that. I need to hear all the little sound effects and just everything else, you know? And I always try to set it as loud I try to set it as loud as I can without hurting my ears too. That way I can shut out as much background noise as possible too. Because even though I have noise canceling headphones, it's still nice when I can just try and eliminate the rest of the world. Like I try to immerse myself in the game as much as possible so I can make sure I don't miss out on anything. Yep. Oh, I oh look at that! Oh my god! Remember when I said this is like fighting a floating Kazuya? Case in point, my options were covered and I just died. Alright, it's alright. What? Like, this is why you camp this character as Falcon. Because that sh happens. I start bringing it back, but Let's go, that read. Let, look at this little spot dodge read. Let's go, I felt it in my soul. Oh, thanks, Gatsby. I appreciate it. I mean, oh, let's go, Grad. It's still funny though. He might think that we just like hate him for some reason, but it's definitely not like that. It was just funny. Do that little weave though. Look at that. Look how I survived that nair. Yeah, that was a really good You're read. Living. Yep. Then he read my aerial. That was such a good edge guard. Am I in base homies IRL? Uh, I'm not sure I'd call us friends, but I'd say we're more than like acquaintances. Like, we're definitely very friendly with each other, but I don't think we've really hung out, you know? Like, we're always super friendly around each other, but we've never really hung out, so I wouldn't really say I know the guy, and I don't think he really knows me either. I could definitely see us, like, being, you know, good friends one day or something, though, because the vibes are always good. I feel like we have a really similar, like, attitude towards a lot of things in the game, so we just kind of get along with each other. Yeah. If there are so many positions in this matchup where if you're just slightly off, you just die. There you go. Let's go. He's not ready, bro. He's not ready. Ah, uh, that was the strongest. Let's go, Griffin. Yep. God, I love that so much. You, you threaten people with back air, they try to shield it, and then you up B them. Not enough uh, Falcons will do that because I think a lot of Falcons will be like afraid to do that because they think if they miss they'll die, and maybe they're right, but you just use back air to scare them into shielding and then just secure the kill. Like notice how I didn't use up B to cover any of these shields until then. I feel like sometimes people will condition something effectively and then they'll end up in a situation where they'll burn the trigger on what they've built up when it's not very useful to do so. You want, I think it's very important that when you condition certain behaviors, you try to only capitalize on said behavior when you can get the most out of it you can. Like here, if, like let's suppose I did this earlier in the game, I would effectively be telling him, okay, 
now he has to be ready for up B, and I won't be able to rely on that as a win condition anymore. But because I specifically waited to cash out on what I conditioned up to this moment, I got to rely on it as a win condition in a high stress situation. And having reliable win conditions in stressful situations in important tournament sets is a big deal. Let's go, Griffin! Let's go! Let's go! Oh my god! Dude, look at this stock! Oh my god! That stock was tight! How often do you kill Jigglypuff that early? What a way to start game three. Dude, he's so fucking This is what Yeah, I, I uh, started playing really well. Griffin Miller! That spacing? Dude, look at that spacing. Look at that nair. Look how clean that was. And yeah, I move a lot when I play Dark Strike. Like, I do like the Mario Kart DI where I like lean into Let's go, Griffin. Let's go, Griffin. So uh, that game was fast, and that's uh, that's my set versus base mage at Super Smash Con. First two games were close. Game three, uh, game three, I kind of went off. Okay.